Hello there, welcome back to Architect Interview Question Series. And in this series, we are covering system design questions, software architecture, and like in your questions which are at the level of principal engineer. And even for a senior engineer, it is good to have the knowledge of these concepts. And the series is by from Knowledge Powerhouse. Let's see what is our next question. Question is how to answer a system design question. I mean, there's, there's a question in the question that when you go for an interview and you ask a system design problem, how do you answer that question that how will we solve that system design thing? Well, a system design question is asked to test your thinking process and the range of your experience in dealing with a wide variety of problems. So mainly, there's nothing like a right or wrong in a system design uh, interview there you have to like express your thinking process so most important part is communication right so you you have to answer on that so let's see like what are the important parts that we have to take care of while answering this kind of a question so let's say number one item is communication then we go on to problem solving so in communication remember you have to talk at least like 70 to 80 percent of the time you have to drive the communication. You have to drive that conversation. What is the problem? How are we solving? So you have to keep telling about your thinking process in that system design. And wherever you do not have a like information, try to gather that information, right? So even listening is also part of communication. So you have to gather the information also. Second part is problem solving. So they are looking for like your approach and like, you know, I mean, what are the new ways or what are the ideas you have already used? So normally our approach comes from our past experience, right? So that way we can be innovative, but at the same time, our past experience, our breadth of knowledge, I mean, based on that, we can do the problem solving. So take it like, you know, as a challenge and try to solve that problem, maybe by first by brute force, then by optimization. So that way you have to focus on that. Then third part is your experience, of course. So if you have worked something similar in the past, so from your experience, you can bring those anecdotes or bring those points in the system design, say that, I mean, this is what we have observed, like this kind of database is better in this situation, or this kind of architecture, or this kind of algorithm is better. So do demonstrate your experience there. Because those instances will show that you have really worked on these kind of problems. Then comes the technical knowledge. Technical knowledge is not very high because it's more like problem solving kind of a thing, but there is some breadth of your like technical knowledge of like kind of databases, kind of solutions, kind of data structures. That is a good point where you can show and demonstrate your technical knowledge as well. And this is also one part. And the last but not the least is adaptability. At times, in system design because it's like you know a conversation that will you you will have with the interviewers so in that interviewer may suggest something so you need to be adaptable or the interviewer may be like suggesting some changes or they may be challenging you so you should be adaptable to those challenges and you should be adapting to changing that approach right so if you take care of these five points you'll be happy to like you know uh, answer those questions and be confident there right now let's go to some of the items that you should try to cover during a system design interview. First part is scope. So scope is like you know the amount of work that you have to do, like what exactly the system is supposed to do. So you want to define that because somebody may ask you to like you know come up with a lift, like develop a lift system or develop a Twitter or an Uber or anything like that. So I mean, these are the systems that are built like by thousands of engineers in like multiple years. So you may have to focus to like, you know, that what is the scope that we are trying to solve in this session, in this next 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour, what exactly we are trying to solve. So understand that scope. And it's a good idea to start with the reduced scope or minimum viable product. So you can always refer these terms like, you know, this is the scope. Or I'm expecting assuming this is the minimum viable product we can start with right so that way focus on the scope part second comes the requirements so from requirements nobody will give you like straightforward requirements it's uh, like your duty 
you do the requirement gathering, right? So this is the important part that they may say that this is what system is supposed to do, but at like your level for your understanding, you need to ask them, you need to help them define what are the requirements. So gather those requirements and note down like them as functional requirements, non-functional requirements, so that you can have what is the scope. Like this is more like defining the scope when you are gathering the requirements. Once you have the requirements, then not everything has to be solved, right? Like requirements is like, a, I mean, if you ask a business person, they can have so many requirements, but from an engineer or architect perspective, you can only come up with some set of features, right? So you have to minimize that and say that what are the main features that the system is, will be developing first. So focus on that part, right? Like you can say that there are 10 features out of which these are the three features that we are focusing on first to design these three features. And those features will create the minimum viable product. Once you have features, then like since it's a system design question nowadays, so they're not expecting you to develop like a college application. It's more like an enterprise application. So in an enterprise application, one of the most important part is scale. Scale means like how many customers are there, how many requests would be there, like what kind of servers, what kind of costs I can bear. So what is the like throughput we, we have to provide for. So try to capture the scale from the perspective of the interviewer, right? So they'll be happy to give you those details. And this will help you define the fine, right kind of algorithm or right kind of database that you pick in your system design. So do focus on that scale part and spend some minutes there. And after scale, you have uh, users. Now users like this is sometimes like during the features or requirement gathering also people specify users, but if they haven't, then you need to focus on that. What are the users? What are the type of users? And like number of users, how many concurrent users? Are there active users or dormant users? Because they may say that develop this system for like 500 million users, right? Now, out of that, you can see you know, out of 500 million users, how many are active? Because that will like depend on your load on your servers, right? Like if your active users are the ones who cause load, rest may be just lying in the database. And then geographically also, you can say what are the geographies in which the users are distributed so that you may have to develop some kind of CDN, like content delivery network, or you may have to have some kind of a, like a shards. So all those kind of things you can do based on geographic location of users. So once you have gathered all this information, users, features, like scope, then start thinking in terms of data model. In data model, we see what are the entities that we have to develop, what will be the relationship between these entities, what will be the business rules that and these entities have to satisfy whether one customer can have multiple price plans or they can have just one price plan. So all these kind of things we cover. And once we have that, then we can determine the type of database that may be suitable for us. Like it can be a RDBMS or it can be NoSQL database, right? So if we use NoSQL, whether we should use Cassandra, we should HBase or we should go for Spark, like, or we should just use My MySQL. So think of from that perspective, what will suit best in your data model, right? So if there are photos, we need a blob storage, or we use a document-based database. So we have, an we have another video on selection of NoSQL databases. Do watch that to know more. After data model, start thinking from high-level design. And when I say thinking, you have to start speaking also, right? Like start drawing on the whiteboard. So and keep telling them this is what the direction and they are free to like correct you kind of a thing. So describe your high level description of the system, how you are modeling the system, what kind of flow you are coming up with, then identify some of the core use cases. You can start drawing a block diagram on whiteboard, start drawing like maybe five, six boxes, say these are the core components and what kind of communication will take place between them. It's a very high level kind of a design that can be needed. Uh, to solve the actual problem from end to end. Once you have uh, that high level diagram and those boxes are drawn, you can see that what are the components, focus on each component, what are the major parts of these components, what are the subsystems, what are the component modeling, how kind of collaboration model will take place, right? What kind of interfaces do you need? 
or do you want to like design in the layers so that like I mean these layers will take care of one another there can be high level layer where you can introduce some kind of cache to speed things up so think from that perspective and start describing those components so basically it's like peeling the onion so we start from very vague thing and slowly slowly we go through each layer and keep describing them after components uh, think from because you describe the interactions there will be issues like bottlenecks there can be some opportunities there can be some risk there can be some failure points so do bring up those see that if there is a single point of failure that is coming up over here how do we mitigate that and do we need to create replica of the data if we are in multiple geographies and if we are going for distributed system what kind of like cluster we should go for and i mean that way you have to cover that how will we monitor the performance of our service do we need to set up some kind of alerts uh, like on the critical components so all the strategies of handling bottlenecks we need to come up there and then comes one a very important part which is security so these days security is very high you know priority item because to keep the data secure so in security in general there are two parts one is how to keep your data secure and second is how to keep data secure in transit right when the data is at rest then you secure it and when the data is at transit then you secure it right so for transit generally we use https tls uh, for security and for data at rest we use some kind of encryption mechanism so do cover that part like what is the sensitive data what are the risks and that way security seems to be covered from your perspective and last but not the least there are things like extensibility maintainability like those are the points like i mean if you have time do spend some time on that so that if there are future features then how would you modify one of the component to add that feature if there is some kind of production issue performance issue what all you can do that so do cover these points and that way you'll be confident to answer the system design question all right that's all from us and if you have further question do mention in our comments we'll be happy to answer that for you thank you and do not forget to subscribe so that uh, you can keep getting more alerts and you can keep getting up-to-date information from the channel for new videos on system design all right thank you and have a great day